Um, I grew up with my mom and my dad and my younger brother and um, we live out on my grandfather's farm. We built there when I was five. I love being outside, I love riding horses and um, jumping on the trampoline and playing with my dog. As a kid I enjoyed playing outside. I always loved um, just being out, using my imagination for anything. Um, I loved entertaining, dancing for my family, and singing Michael Jackson songs. I'm one of four children and we always had a full house. Um, I have an older sister and an older brother that are seven and nine years older than me. And then I have a younger sister um, who's four years younger. I was seven and in the first grade when I was diagnosed with acute myeloid leukemia. Uh, it hit my family very hard and my brother was really young so it took a toll on him too because my parents were, you know, trying to be with me all the time. So he, he pretty much lived with my grandparents during my, during my treatment. When I was born, my family told me that the doctors told them that hope for the best but expect the worst. And that if I did make it, I would be confined to a wheelchair. I have an arrhythmia, which is a regular heartbeat. Uh, ventricular tachycardia, um, the leakage in one of my valves. I played outside constantly. Um, I never let it hold me back. I never wanted it to hold me back from anything. Two months after my sweet 16 birthday, um, I remember not feeling very well, um, being a little extra tired, um, and going to a few doctor's appointments. Um, the phone rang and I, I knew my mom went back to answer it away from me. And I, I knew that they were calling to discuss the results from my biopsy. And a little bit later, that's when they asked me to come back to their bedroom. I remember my older sister, Crystal, she got down on her knee beside me and held my hands and told me everything is gonna be all right. But, and she said the C word, as I still refer to it to this day, cancer and she explained it as Hodgkin's lymphoma um, that it was at a stage four um, what we learned later. I had five rounds of chemo and it made me really sick and miserable and I lost all my hair and I was I had no immune system so whenever anyone was around me they had to wear a mask you know, I couldn't be around my friends. I was in the hospital most of the time, and I would come home for a day or two and then have to go right back. So it was not the life that a seven-year-old wanted to live. I was very, very talented with football, and I loved it. Absolutely loved sports. Uh, my doctor previous years had told me that one day I'd have to stop playing sports. And although he told me that, I never wanted to believe it until the day of my last stress test. And he told me, he said, Ryan, I'm sorry, but it has to stop. You have to stop. Your condition's to a point now where it's getting dangerous. It crushed me. It, that's all I had in life. We started the nine months of chemotherapy, uh, which ended up being well over a year. I had to start seeing so many different types of doctors for because of the chemo and radiation that I had. I felt they did the best that they can to prevent this from happening, but that I would most likely never be able to conceive my own children. Um. By the time I had talked to Make-A-Wish, everything was, you know, I was in remission and I was doing okay. So by that time, you know, I'd been through the really bad infections and the really scary, you know, near death times. Um, my wish was to go to Disney World and I chose that because, you know, I every kid loves Disney World and I had been before it when I, a few years prior and I really enjoyed it. But I also wanted my family to have a good time too because I knew it had been really hard on them. So I figured it was something that we could all enjoy as a family. And it was just a fabulous place. They made you feel so welcome. You know, they'd leave you gifts in your room and there was a castle that we could go play at. And it was just, it was a really, really nice place that, you know, made me feel really special. When I got into high school, I picked up drama. I had already had an um, itch for entertaining, but I actually went and took the classes. And from there, 
Literally one door closed with the sports and another door opened with the entertainment. My wish ended up being going to Hollywood, California, taking my mother and my father, who all three of us literally had grown up in a very small town, got to meet a very prominent gentleman in the industry. His name was Thaddeus. He had worked on many, many productions. And he told me everything that I needed to do to get to where I wanted to get. And to be there and to see all this, it made it within reach for me. And I remember getting that phone call and them telling my mom, hey, Shaylin has been granted this wish. You guys are going to Hawaii. My favorite memory of my entire trip uh, was climbing Diamond Head. It's a very vivid memory for me. And I rested and I caught my breath and I thought to myself, wow, there is a lot out there in this life to live for. There's a lot for me to see and explore and I'm not gonna give up. I wanna keep fighting and felt hope. I didn't think that I would get into Carolina and lo and behold, I did. I'm gonna graduate with uh, a major in history and Peace War and Defense. I love Make-A-Wish. I think Make-A-Wish is a great, great program. It lets these kids know that, you know, people do care and know, you know, what they've gone through is, it's a really big deal and, you know, it makes them feel special. It, it gave me a new start to my life. It, you know, it kind of finished off that chapter of my life on a positive note and then, you know, allowed me to go into the next chapter of my life cancer free. Literally since the time I got back from my wish in 2006, I've been taking numerous amounts of acting classes, acting workshops, everything I can do to perfect my craft. I want to be the best that I can be. That wish meant everything to me. It really did. Not only did it wasn't my wish, but I got to share it with my mother and my father. It made my overall dreams and aspirations like come real for me. And it was the greatest time, it really was. It was a great, great time. God had other plans for us. I wasn't feeling well, I was having a lot of complications. Um, my primary care sent me to my oncologist. I did not want to hear any of this. We had just gotten married. Life was supposed to be good and happy and cancer was not supposed to be knocking on my door. Through all this time, we were scared that something is wrong. There was nothing wrong. By the grace of God, there was a baby, a baby growing inside of me. Our son, Carter Joseph, was born, and that changed our world. Around his first birthday, um, just after, um, God blessed us with the second baby that we were told would never happen. Behind every wish is a story that writes itself of innocence, struggle, joy, of miracles. Sarah, Ryan, and Shaylin are the sequels we rarely witness. Never ceasing to stop us in our tracks, they break and lift our hearts. Like those little necessary pinches in life that wake us up to a reminder that down deep inside, we're still alive and that on the other side of every wish is the blessing of a grateful life.